G'day, and Kiora. Altair here. Welcome to part 4 of my War Thunder skinning tutorial series. This episode is all about creating the colours and patterns for your camo scheme. Last time out we created the panel lines, rivet lines and screw lines that we will use in our finished product. At the moment, they're hilarious colours, but we'll fix that by the end of this video. Today we'll look at finding accurate colour references, layering the camo, soft versus hard edges, and finishing off the panel, rivet and screw lines. A bit of digging around on the web should unearth a lot of info, especially if you hit modelling sites. No, no, the plastic kid kind. People there are often obsessed with getting accurate colours for their projects. You may find the sites you visit mention something called an FS colour. FS stands for Federal Standard. And there's a wonderful thing called the Colour Server, a link is provided in the description, where you can type in a short FS number and get a swatch of the correct colour. Let's see how this works. I found an article that mentions the three RAAF Vengeance colours, Foliage Green, Dark Earth and Sky Blue but it doesn't mention any FS colours. So I went searching and found another one that did give me the first two. FS20099 and FS24092. But sky blue means different things to different people and air forces are just the same. RAF sky is a murky green colour that blends in beautifully with the polluted haze that smothered the United Kingdom. More digging around found a reference to RAAF Sky Blue and it being close to 25550. I'll plug those numbers into the FS Color Server and here's the result. That's as good a starting place as any, so I'll make a copy of this and save it to the research folder. Okay, let's open the skin. I'm going to turn off the layers we made last time. I'll drop in the swatch I just made. I'm going to set a colour overlay on my underside layer to the sky blue colour. Now the one on my top camo base to the green colour. And the top camo alternate to the brown colour. Let's throw that swatch layer into the tools folder. The next step is to select all of the parts that will be painted sky blue. Obviously the undersides of the wings and the tailplane, but also the bottom of the fuselage, the intake and the gear doors. Oh, and the pedo tube. We can select all of those areas by control shift clicking on the thumbnails. Now I'll select the layer that I've called underside in the colors folder and use Alt plus Backspace to flood fill. Yes, I know the whole fuselage is sky blue now. Don't worry about it, we're going to fix that right now. Let's go through and select all of the parts that will have the brown-green camo pattern. Control shift clicking on each thumbnail and turn. Flood fill the two top camo layers, both the base and the alternate one and save. Get into the habit of saving your work every time you stop to scratch yourself, because when your PC crashes, and it will crash, at least you'll only lose a few minutes work, not hours. Okay, now let's look at the research photos to check out what sort of edge our camo should have. Should it be hard or soft? Huh, well, I'm going to go for a medium soft brush, what I call a 50-50. Set the brush width to 50 and the hardness to 50 as well. While I'm here, I'll do exactly the same for the eraser tool, 50-50. Okay, so I'm now going to start getting rid of the top camo layers that don't need to be there. For a start, let's get rid of the stuff on the underside of the fuselage. Firstly, control click the thumbnail for the fuselage in the shapes folder. I'll explain why in a moment. Let's turn off the top camo alternate layer 
and drop the opacity of the top camo base layer to just 65%, just so I can see the line of the colouring used in the background image. I'm going to use the eraser the same way that I drew my panel lines in part 3. Click where I want to start and shift click at the end of each straight section. Now remember that this technique only does straight lines. If you're following a curve you need to make sure that your clicks are spaced close together. Now I'll go freehand and just rub out the other stuff here. By control clicking the thumbnail before, I can do this without worrying about erasing parts that are adjacent to the part that I'm working on. Now if we look at the photos I found in research, you'll notice that the camo used on RAAF planes is slightly different to our French background example. See under the tail plane here? How the sky blue curves up to meet the leading edge? It does it for the main wing as well. So I'll give that a go now. There. And there and there. And I'll do it on the opposite side too. Now let's put that opacity back up to 100%. I could go through and try and match the exact same thing on the top camo alternate layer now. But remember, I'm a lazy bugger. How about this way instead? Control click on the thumbnail of the top camo base layer. Now select the top camo alternate layer and turn it on. Hit Control shift i to invert your selection. Press Delete. Sort we, Governor. Let's save this, both as a PSD and a DDS. And let's take a peek at the colours on the model. Just to see that everything's OK. OK, looks pretty good so far. Time for the camo pattern. I'll use my plan view drawing as a template. Now I don't normally like relying on somebody else's version of reality, but I can't find a photo that shows the top of the wing in enough detail to skin. I've checked the drawing and what you can see of the camo on the sides matches photos I have pretty closely, so I'm going to go with it. I'll throw a copy into the PSD, snip off the bit with the wing, knock its opacity down to 65% and rotate it and scale it until it matches the shape of our wing. I use the same technique as before to cut out the bits I don't need from the top camo alternate layer. I'm cutting out the bits that will be green. I'll control click the thumbnail of the upper wing layer and let's have at it. Now I have a few photos of both sides. The one on the starboard is better than the one on the port, but I think there's enough there anyway. Same thing as before. Slowly, bit by bit, I erase the stuff that should be green. Now let's say I screw up and take away too much from the brown layer. Like this, for example. I can fix it by using the brush tool to paint in the missing detail. By setting up the colour overlay, it doesn't really matter what colour I paint with and the brush is exactly the same shape as the eraser, 50-50. OK, let's see how that all looks now. Yep, that'll do. <laughs> now the last thing I said we'd do in this part was to fix up those panel lines, the rivets and the screw layers. Let's turn them on. I'll turn off the effects for the panel lines and rivets. Let's open the end map as well and select the black layer with the colour overlay. Go back to the C map and select our three layers, panel lines, rivets and screws. Right click on any one of them and select duplicate layers. Change the destination document to grr underscore n dot psd. Now let's knock the opacity of the panel lines layer down to about 15%. Turn the rivets layer off completely. Change the colour overlay for the screws to medium grey. 
Now let's switch back to the end map. Change the color overlay of the panel lines to a medium dark green. Add a bevel and emboss to the rivets layer. Use pillow emboss and a size of three. Now remember my rivets already had a bright green color overlay from part three. That transferred across when the layer was duplicated. So if you haven't already got that, you might want to put it in now. Set the opacity of the rivets layer to 15%. Change the color overlay of the screw layer to medium bright blue, something like this. Now save both the N and the C maps as DDS and check out the results in game. Okay, it's beginning to get there. Next time out, we'll add the roundels and the cereals. See you then. Kia kaha.